When I was in the seminary, one of the professors at 4.30 in the morning would walk up and down the halls and... and ring the bell, which is where I get this bell from. He would go up and down the hall at 4.30 in the morning, ringing the bell, 4.30 in the morning, ringing the bell and yell at the top of his voice, rise and shine, boys, rise and shine, 4.30 in the morning. I am reminded of that every time I ring the bell. Rise and shine. That first Easter, I imagine God the Father saying to his son, Jesus, Rise and shine! And Jesus rose. And his resurrection gives our life meaning. In the resurrection, our life finds its meaning as all of our suffering and sadness is embraced by our loving God who rose so that our brokenness doesn't win. God does. The God who is in you and with you. He rose so that it's no longer you who live as St. Paul tells us in the Bible, but Christ who lives in you. Our failures do not win. God's strength does. Death doesn't get the last word. Word. The word of God does. And the word is Jesus, made flesh. God's love wins. No death can ever win in our life as Christians. And that's why today we gather singing Alleluia. You notice John's gospel, which is proclaimed on every Easter Sunday morning, has as the central theme the burial cloths. John's Gospel, which was written for a Jewish audience, Jews who had converted to become Christians, they would have been very familiar with people being wrapped tightly in burial cloths. That's why over and over again, John mentions the fact that Jesus' body was wrapped up tightly in burial cloths, so much so that nothing during those times could unwrap, no human could unwrap a wrapped up dead body in burial cloths. No human could do it. But God can do all things. For there is nothing impossible for God. That's faith. That there is nothing impossible for God. So whatever has you today wrapped up so tightly that you feel that nothing can unwrap you. Whatever it is in your own life, maybe it's your marriage situation, a personal situation, some problem with your children, an addiction, Depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, whatever it may be, maybe a cancer diagnosis, 
or some other sickness or disease, whatever. You may be wrapped up in fear or worry. Whatever it is that has you wrapped up, maybe it's your bills or your employment situation. Whatever it is that has you wrapped up and in a tomb, humanly, you may feel like nothing can unwrap you. But you are here today in church on Easter Sunday morning proclaiming that you believe in the power of the resurrection, that God's love is stronger than anything that may have you wrapped up. And with God in your life, you can do it. In fact, the Bible says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. All things. You know, I am taken back to that bell in the seminary when I so often would want to crawl back under my blankets at 4.30 in the morning and I would say to myself, oh, just 10 more minutes and then I will get up. But that would eventually turn into an hour and when everybody was in, at prayer in the seminary, and I used to always get in trouble for this, everybody was in, in prayer and they would say, where is Adam? He didn't get up again. <laughs> and one of the professors would come knocking on my door and I would be in so much trouble. <laughs> I just want 10 more minutes. All the trouble that was caused in my life because I did not want to rise and shine. I preferred the tomb of hiding under the blanket as it felt so good. Yeah, hiding feels so good, doesn't it? You know, we can, we, it, it feels so good to be under the blanket. It feels good. It's hard work, isn't it, to actually get up and rise and shine and so often at 4.30 in the morning. Huh? You don't want to. Rising and shining and living and living isn't easy. It wasn't easy for Jesus either. And neither is it for you. But why do we seek the living among the dead? As the Bible proclaims. Why do we want to hide in the covers and in our tombs? There was a big stone put in front of the tomb that nobody could ever move. But nothing could keep Jesus in the tomb. No stone, no burial cloths. And if you truly believe in the power of the resurrection, nothing, no matter what it is in your own life, can keep you in the tomb either. No stone, so roll away the stone. Take the burial cloths off that have you living a life of death. So many people talk about those who have died that they are the dead. No. They are the living. We are the ones who are the dying. But we are called to be the living to live in the power of the resurrection, to rise and shine, to stop hiding in our shame rather than getting help for whatever it is that you need help from. 
like for your depression or anxiety or suicidal thoughts, going and seeing a doctor and getting medicine for that or getting counseling, help. Hiding in shame rather than getting help for your marital issues. Hiding in shame rather than venturing out and dating and finding a partner for your life rather than remaining lonely and alone. It's called Match.com. <laughs> Hiding under the covers in your addiction rather than getting help. Why do we prefer the tomb and its darkness and the covers? Why? Because it seems to be way more comfortable than starting an exercise program or a diet program. We are called co-workers in the Bible. It's not that, you know, God's going to come down and do the work for you. For you, we're Catholic. We believe in faith and works, not just faith alone. You got to do the work. In order to participate in the resurrection. Huh? So what is the tomb that you have crawled into? the covers under which you are hiding? Is it the tomb of participating in all this garbage political rhetoric that has divided our country? Where you're listening to all these cable news shows and fill yourself with all that stuff and you see other people as your enemies? where you take sides, climb out of that. Stop it. What tomb do you have to step out of? God the Father said that first Easter, rise and shine. And Jesus did it. He did it. Now, you are his body, and he lives in you. The Bible teaches us that we are the body of Jesus. It's not that he's up there and we're here. No, he's in you. You are his body. And that power of the resurrection, which you should have reminded yourself of the baptism when I hit you with that water today, that reminds you of the baptism. And Paul says, those of you who have been baptized into Christ have also been baptized into his death so as to share in the power of the resurrection. So if you are baptized, that power of the resurrection is in you. You have what it takes to rise and shine. So why don't you want to? Miracles take participation. I hit you with some holy water. Yesterday at the Easter vigil, I had all these people come with uh, gallons and gallons of water. And one person even brought this like mini tank that they rolled in on a cart, you know, <laughs> for me to bless. I mean, you should have seen this. Like, uh... One person said, I, I have a little barrel out, out there in my, do I have to bring it in here for you to bless it? And this always reminds me, when I was in Crescent City, there was this guy who used to always run around all the time after me with gallons for me to bless the, the bless water, holy water for him. I don't know what he did with it. I don't, don't ask. I didn't ask either. Okay. I don't know what he needed this holy water for, but one time he didn't find me 
And so I'm in the Walmart, the local Walmart. Okay, it was like the mall over there. And, <laughs> and he's running after me with gallons. Because somebody had told him, you know, big, uh, in big towns it's, it's hard to find people. But in small towns, and we know what that's like. That means, you know, big gossip. And so everybody, you know, they said, oh, Father, is at the Walmart? So <laughs> he's running after me with a, a couple gallons. And I said, oh, no, this has to stop. It can't go on. So I said, Jimmy, let's say he was Jimmy. Jimmy, listen, invite me over to your house, okay? And I will bless your faucet. <laughs> then you can have all the holy water you want. <laughs> Now, I won't tell you whether I did it or not. <laughs> so don't go inviting me over to bless your faucet. <laughs> In other words, we want miracles. We want something to do it for us. If I just bathe myself with all this holy water. When I was in Las Vegas, we had this big... Uh, baptismal font as you walked in, okay? And I, I, would, I would see all these people, you know, all these people come in and like wash their hair in there and everything else. And then other people would come in with a cup and they would drink it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd secretly put a little bit of bleach in there. <laughs> because we have this mentality that something, something like holy water or some, you know, some other gadget, you know, something is going to bring a miracle for us or some person. No, you have to do it. You, you, Jesus had to do it himself. He had to rise. See, we, we take one step and God does the rest, but we don't want to take that one step. It's so hard to get out of bed first, especially at 4.30 in the morning. But once you do it, you get going. God helps you. We are co-workers. 1 Corinthians 3.9. That means you need to do the work. We are God's field, but God won't take you by force. He's not a rapist. He's a gentleman. He invites you to rise and shine. So this Easter, I'm asking all of you a question. Will you? You know what you need to do. Don't come back at Christmas the same. Okay? Let this Easter change you. You're here on, at Easter. Don't come back next Christmas <laughs> the same. Let it change you. What covers do you need to pull off of your face to rise and shine this Easter? So do I want to rise with Christ or do I prefer to stay dead? St. Paul in the letter to the Romans says, You who were baptized into Christ have also been baptized into his death so as to share in his resurrection, so that just like he rose, you may also rise and shine as well. Stop hiding behind the masks and rise and shine this Easter and admit that taking the mask off is what you need to do, what I need to do, what we all need to do in our life in order to experience the glorious life that God wants us to have and that all that we are hiding under and in is killing us. God is calling us to life. But if we embrace the life God is calling us to have, we have to get rid of the things that are killing us. Do you want to? 
or would you rather pull the covers over your head and say like I would, can I just stay hidden a little while longer? You know it's killing you. So give it up. Take the wrappings off. Roll away the stone. It's a decision. You are a decision. Faith is a decision. Decide today. It's Easter. I'm going to rise and shine. Let me end with this illustration. When I was still living in Poland, we had a lake, much smaller than Clear Lake, but kind of as dirty as Clear Lake and smelly, but we didn't have any pools or anything like that, so you know, you, you didn't have any any place else and it was in the town of Oviesno not too not too far from where I grew up and we used to go there to s swim and there there was a lot of mud at the shore on the beach let's say okay and I didn't know how to swim. And so I would be in the, in the muddy part of the, of the shore and I would move my arms in the mud. And once in a while as I was moving my arms in the mud, I would lift up my head and I would say, Look, Grandma, I'm swimming! I'm swimming, I would say. I'm swimming. Moving my arms in the mud. No, I wasn't swimming. I was mud crawling. Do you know something about mud crawling in your own life? Quit mud crawling is the message of Easter. Live! Don't just mud crawl. Swim! One of my favorite parts of the Bible is the story of Peter and the disciples fishing all night and they haven't caught anything all night. And Jesus comes on the scene and Jesus says, well, go out fishing, he says to Peter. And Peter says to Jesus, but Lord, we have been fishing all night and haven't found anything. We haven't caught any fish. And Jesus says, Peter, push away from the shallow waters. In other words, quit mud crawling and cast your nets into the deep water. And Peter doesn't want to do it. Remember what he says, but Lord, you know, we have done this over and over again. It's like so many of us will say, you know, I've tried this exercise program so many times. I've been dating all of these people and they're all losers. You know, uh, uh, you know I've tried so many times. <laughs> I've tried so many times. I've been married already five times. Okay, well, you know, try again. Okay, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> you know, I've done all of these things and it, nothing has worked. That was Peter. He was doubting that it would work. Life is about falling because if you never fall, you cannot get up. So that's why we fall, so we can get up. You know, it's about taking risks. You risk nothing, you gain nothing. It's all a risk. It's a, it's a risk you're here today in the midst of everything. And I'm so proud of you because you're all here today. Okay? That's so wonderful. 
It's a risk. Life is about taking risks. You risk nothing, you gain nothing. Jesus wants you to risk. Risk. Don't live the safe life. Live life. Live. And Jesus says, put out into the deep waters. And then the defining words that Peter says. We've been fishing all night and we've caught nothing. Nevertheless, that's what you have to say to yourself. Nevertheless, at your word, at your command, we will lower the nets and they cast their nets into the deep waters, not the shallow waters, away from the shores. And when they cast their nets into the deep waters, the catch of fish was tearing at the nets. Nevertheless, at your word, that's the word today Jesus is giving you on this resurrection. Cast your nets into the deep waters and then the amount of fish because that's the power of God will overwhelm you at the wonders that God will work. In other words, rise and shine. Rise and shine. Down with the nets. Down with the nets. And up come the fish. <laughs>